I do believe that an open society is better than a closed society. However, one thing that as psychologists we can say is that the cultural basis of democracy varies a great deal across societies. For example, English democracy, democracy in England, is very different from democracy in America, which is very different from democracy in France, which is very different from democracy in Canada. So we have to expect huge variations in democracy in different parts of the world. And it seems to me completely wrong to start by saying, okay, we're going to have democracy in, in Iraq or anywhere else in that region, and what can we do to export it? This is the wrong way to go. I've talked about contextualized democracy, that is study the culture, the local conditions, and try to understand what it is in that culture that you can build on, what democratic features are there, and actually you'll find, to our surprise, that there are democratic features, even in uh, what appear from the outside to be backward society. Psychology and human rights are inextricably linked. It is absolutely essential that we as a profession and science come to recognize that what we do, the way we think, how we do it, must be guided ultimately by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. That to think of psychology apart from human rights somehow uh, does a, a very strange thing to the field. It makes it seem as if it doesn't have relevance, meaning, and application to the world that we're living in today. My main interest is how we work together to be both critical and cooperative with each other as activists. I think the psychology of, of activism, the psychology of creating social change, is one thing that has not been really enough studied. There are many How do we bring about solutions? Uh, one of my arguments has been that solutions cannot be all top down. They have to be thinking about bottom up as well. And when we think about bottom up in the in the Islamic world particularly, we have to think about the role of women. And women as the solution is my slogan. Uh, in fact, if you look at what's happening in countries such as Iran, the really progressive movements are being led by women. Uh, most people are surprised when I tell them that 60% of undergraduates in Iranian universities are women. Over there as well, women are beating men out in the entrance exams. And they're moving uh, on the democracy front as well. If we start to think of it like that, all of a sudden there's a whole new language of, of global poverty. All of a sudden it's about human rights and social justice. It's about capability and morality. It's about quality of life and resilience and marginality and privilege and capital. We introduce an entirely new dialogue and possibility for dialogue by thinking of it this way. Avoid the vicious circle of being too, becoming too personally aggressive and defensive in our working together. The other one is becoming what you might call, sometimes call the woman's way of being too quickly consensus because we don't want to fight. And so we have the, we have the aggressive way we have the consensus way, both of which are kind of vicious circles and lead us not to be as effective as we could be. And sometimes lead us, it's let, lead us to play right into the hands of the people we are trying to, to gain power over, to empower ourselves against. So those two things, the, the creative way is to both allow criticism and to do it in such a way that we get cooperation.